when you look back at that, those early days in your K1 career, I know you won four or five titles during that time. Um, how, how do you look back on that that time in terms of your enjoyment of fighting and where you were? Well, I looked, I look, I look upon it fondly, and the best moment I had, especially with winning, winning money, um, a lot of money. Well, I thought ten thousand dollars. I mean, that's a lot of money nowadays, but I, I still thought it was a lot of money. I won my first Oceana, and I was living in Harbord with with Jules. You know, um, was in a, renting a room from Lucy. I won ten thousand dollars, and I bought my first. Uh, I bought a TV and video, and bought a. You know, done my room up. I did a bought a doona. <laughs> it was. Uh, I thought I was really rich. I took Jules out um, for dinner. Um, it was a good. That was one of the best moments I felt. Like I'd, um, you know, well, I made ten thousand. I thought I was rich. I was like, yes. <laughs> but a TV video can put the remote to watch uh, from my my room, and you know, I felt like I was uh, a king then, especially being able to because Jules had supported me for so long, um, and being able to do that, you know, by dinner and having those uh, that uh, that stuff made me feel really special. Yeah, yeah, especially from you know that guy in the phone box with no Correct. money to his name to having that opportunity. I had win. I had money, forty cents. I had forty cents. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. from K one, you then signed a contract with Pride. Can you tell me a bit about how that came about and what was your motivation for that move? Well, there was um, there was all like I said. Well, the motivation was money. I just came up injury fighting in uh, Vegas um, a year up. There was two companies in, in, in Japan fighting for. For TV deals and rights, it was it was Pride and, and K1, and um, you know I found out about this competition uh, Pride um, back in those days when they said would, you, would I like to fight a guy named Fujita, Fujita Japanese guy, and um, we look sort of similar to be honest. But I'm like I was a big Dragon Ball Z fan, and, and, and he was his name was Fujita, but there's a character in, in Dragon Ball Z called Fujita. But I was like no no I'm my name I'm Goku, you know you can put me like Goku, not Fujita. Goku. So Goku's the the clumsy idiot on the clumsy character that that's the star on on Dragon Ball Z, yeah. and uh, he he's actually pretty clumsy when he does things, but he's super powerful. So I said, no, no, I'm Goku. That's me. <laughs> and they turn. That's where I got the Super Saiyan on him. They turn into Super Saiyans. Their race is the, the Saiyan race, and when they go to battle, they, their hair goes white, and they go into the Super Saiyans. You know, my, my was Samoan, but you know, by when I got to fight, it's the Super Samoan. So. And that's where that came from. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So what were we talking about? <laughs> what was you? What was the motivation behind signing? Up Money. For Pride? So okay. So yeah. Pride. That's Pride and, and K1 were battling in Japan for 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 TV and domination rights. So I got approached from um, from um, Pride to 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 venture into to MMA, and, and they asked me what I fight this guy named Fujita, and I said no, like as I was trying to yeah. change the character, <laughs> but it was actually a fighter. And I said, what is this MMA stuff? And that's when I first saw Pride, and I was like this, ooh, that's interesting. I conquered K1, and I thought, nah, I don't want to be kickboxing. Like, what is this new sport? I didn't realize it was an old sport, but it was, you know, it was MMA. And I said, well, let's have a look at it. I didn't sign the contract till later with this company of Pride. And um, I was paid to go and uh, train with Bass Root in, in LA. But I kept the money and just went and trained in India, because, uh, you know, <laughs> Um, because a friend of mine, Steve Oliver, was doing jiu-jitsu, so I thought jiu-jitsu was MMA. Yeah. Um, but um, I, it was a totally different ball game I had to learn. Um, and being with one of the pioneers here, like Marcelo and Jamie Tahuna, and all the MMA pioneers here in Australia, you know, bringing MMA here was, uh, was something I jumped to, which was really good. So um, it was a different sport, MMA, um, and it was a new sport. And I thought it was, when I first had a go at jiu-jitsu, I thought it was like, um, it was easy. And my trainer was uh, Steve, I was uh, 80, 88 kilos or something. A big guy and I thought, you know, I'm like 140, 150, real fatty. And he's like, when I went to first see him doing Jiu Jitsu, he's like, come on. I said, just just stand up, these two guys. And he's like, he started laughing. He goes, yeah, you, you come here, come here. And he put me on the ground and he said, yeah, you stand up. <laughs> so I spent the next eight weeks with uh, Steve Oliver getting hammered him. He was knee right in my face, head, he was freaking, you know, can opening. I just got taught a real different lesson. Like I was, I was, a, I was a great white shark in, in the K1 scene, but I was a fucking guppy in the MMA scene. <laughs> and I felt like that when I started with jujitsu and MMA. Was there? I mean, to this point, fighting has been quite easy to, quite natural, even going into the kickboxing scene. But surviving, fighting is a, 
a life of affliction and surviving. So. Was there ever a point where you thought, this training's too much, fighting isn't for me, I want to try something different, or were no, you I just, in? I just, uh, I just, I just love uh, competing. I love walking out into the arena. I think it's, uh, fighting is like, like walking out to compete against in, in front of the whole world watching. It's a, it's a, it's better than any drugs. Um, you know, people say they're not scared. There's, you go through all that emotion, being scared, all these different emotions to compete there, to go get injured, um, for a worthy cause, of course, um, for my family and stuff. But. And then to, to do it all again, once the outcome is read, whether you win or lose, and to, to automatically say to yourself, fuck, when they say, your mind's telling you, would you do this, do this shit again? You know, my first thought is always, fuck yeah, in a heartbeat. Even when I'm, you know, some of my worst injuries I had with fighting, and um, I've been lucky too, so. Being still injured and, uh, you know, saying I'd do that all over again, it's, it's, it's a, it's strange for people, but it's the sa same thing for me as, as strange as getting up in the morning and going to work if you had a full-time job. That for me is strange. You know, driving in a fast car, you know, 300 kilometers per hour is strange for me, you know? Getting up bicycling um, a fucking, in a triathlon or, or, or horse race or something is strange for me. That for me is strange. So let's move on from Pride to the next chapter in your career. Obviously, um, you then signed for the UFC. You had the decision, I believe, um, when the UFC first bought out Pride to end your contract or to sign on with the UFC. You obviously wanted them to honor the contract. Wow. What, what was behind all of that? Can you give us some insight into that? Well, I can't, I can't, I can't to be honest. And, um, you know, you'll have to just go off what Dana and I say, but that isn't the truth. What he says, that guy always lies. He wakes up and lies to people. He lies to his own mother, that guy. Do you regret the decisions that you made at that time with the UFC? Or do I you don't think regret anything because I was forced into those sort of issues and, and designs. I mean, I wasn't, I mean, uh, yeah, I can't elaborate on it. And I, and I, don't, reg I don't regret anything I've done, especially with the decisions with, with the UFC or anything. Um, and I, like I said before with you guys, I don't just talk my shit, I'm walking my shit. Yeah. All right, well, before we move on from that, you did have the decision at, I think it was 2016, to walk away or to re-sign a contract for six more fights, I believe. What, what was the decision making behind that? Was there sort of already warning signs for what that relationship would become? Or did you think, that I'm just gonna pursue this, I'm gonna finish out my career and leave it behind me? Well, how it ended up being was uh, me being bitter and had them, not, uh, them forcing me to work. Um, what happened was they, they ended up at the seventh guy they forced me to, 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 to fight, they forced me to fight. I didn't want to do it. I, I wanted a clause in my contract saying if the guy was caught cheating, he needed his funds taken off him. You know, and, and uh, when, they fought, when they told me I should fight again with Josh Bynard, they said, no, we'll put a clause in the contract. They wouldn't do it. I'll fight the guy, put a clause in the contract saying, you know, to give me some sort of assurance, some sort of cover, but they wouldn't do it. But this time they forced me to do it. They said, you know, if you don't fight this guy, we're going to fire you. Hey man, didn't you just say you didn't have to force people to fight? That's what they did. They forced me to fight the guy and I had to go do it. I went in, you know, and I was already arguing with these guys. So, so during media, media, I was just arguing with them. I, I hated the company. I hated sitting there. Every time they said something, I said, well, this company's a grub. Why are you working with them? Because they owe me money. You know, why, why shouldn't I be here and get paid? You're standing here talking to me so you can get paid, right? Why should I miss out? Why should my kids miss out? Because these guys are fucking grubs. Because they, 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 they give a shit about money more than, than their employee, than their, than their subcontractors. Not employees, their subcontractors. 